Okay, so today we are going to be talking about a topic that I really feel needs to be spoken about on BookTube, and that is sudden endings in books. So what do I mean by a sudden ending? I mean an ending that comes literally from out of nowhere. You'll be up to a certain point in the book, Maybe even something exciting has occurred. We're just about to get into what that exciting thing is, and all of a sudden, the end. What? <laughs> what do you mean, the end? So today we are going to talk about that because it can be rather disconcerting. I'm putting this video out there to share in the thoughts that I'm sure there are many readers out there who are like me, who have the same thoughts, and for those of you who aren't like me, that's absolutely fine. But also, I'm putting it out there in case there are any authors who ever come across my videos. I hope that this can assist you to see that a sudden ending in a book, really not all that helpful to a reader. To start off with, I just want to make this point here that there are two different types of readers when it comes to sudden endings. There are readers who love to interpret an ending on their own, love to come to their own conclusion of what might happen with this undisclosed ending, and then there are other readers who really don't want to be coming up with stuff on their own, and they want the book to end in a natural way within the book itself. I appreciate the other side, but I certainly fall on this side. I'm one of those readers who, if I'm settling down to read a book, that is, uh, especially if it's an amazing book, then I want that author who has taken me on that journey to conclude the book that I'm reading. And today we are going to talk about three separate books to give you examples of what I'm referring to that really do, kind of, if you will, chop you off at the knees. Goosebumps, My Hairiest Adventure. This is a middle grade horror and revolves around a boy who he's a part of a band and one day when the band is taking a break from their rehearsal, they've gone outside and one of the band members has found a bottle of something called Instatan uh, lotion and all of the band members rub it on themselves, you know, hoping to give themselves a tanny glow. Something comes from that situation. Things progress in the book. I don't want to give away spoilers here. I, I, I could, I really could, with timestamps and all that, but, but I won't. Because the point is not what the plot of the book, the book was. I really did not enjoy this book. I, I have to be real. But... The last two and a half pages were absolutely amazing. And if this book was five pages long with like, I don't know, two and a half pages, then those last two and a half pages, it probably would have received like a higher rating. I got to the last two and a half pages and a reveal occurs where we find out something that for me just came so far out of left field. It was such an amazing reveal. And yet as much as the reveal surprised me when you you know, when you think back, you can connect the dots, and I really appreciated that, you know, all of the clues were there. It's just, I, I didn't think of it. And then suddenly, the book just stopped. So quickly, here's your reveal, the end. And that just annoyed me even more. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. So this is an adult classic. This uh, edition that I hold in my hands is the 80th anniversary edition. It's a beautiful cover. We are following an un unnamed protagonist who is in a terrible situation. She meets an older gentleman. They end up getting married. So he goes back home. She comes with him. They're now married uh, to his mansion. And she finds out a lot of different things when she gets back to the mansion. There's a lot more going on than meets the eye. I had an amazing time reading Rebecca, and I was all set to give this book five stars, until we got to the last page. The climax plays out, and that was, that was, that was a good climax, yeah. The climax occurs away from the home, and we have our characters heading back home to where they live, and they notice something. I'm not going to say what it is, but they notice something. And our protagonist is making this point, I notice this thing. And then, 
The next two words are the end. This was incredibly aggravating for me. The one by Kiera Cass, which is book three in the selection series. In this third book, something happens right at the end of the book that had me emotional. I'm just going to put it that way. I'm not going to say happy, sad, angry, any of that. I'm just going to say it, it had me emotional. I was very invested, I should say. There was a lead up that was occurring to our situation. To something was going to happen. And we were getting there. And that's what we're getting in this last chapter of the book is this is happening and we're on our way and, and we're going to deal with a particular something that's going to occur walking to this room and we're knowing that this thing, whatever it is, is going to happen. And our protagonist gets into the room and they walk to where they need to walk to in this room. And then when they get to this point in this room and this thing is going to happen, that's right, you guessed it, the end. Now I'm going to go into a little more detail about the different type of circumstances that were occurring with these books that made it even more annoying. So let's go back to uh, Goosebumps, My Hairiest Adventure. Remember how I was telling you guys about this sudden ending? We had a reveal that occurred uh, by the time we got to the end, and the reveal was amazing. It came from out of left center, but everything, when you look back, you can connect all the dots and go, oh my gosh, this is amazing, and then it ends. Well, guess what? Really bad news. There is no take two. There is no book two. There is no part two. This is a standalone book. So when I say that it, this cuts off at the knees, it literally does. It is a sudden ending. There is no going back to it. Now I'm going to turn my attention to Rebecca. Remember how I was saying with this one how everything had concluded and then our uh, protagonists are driving home, they get close to home, and our protagonist in her internal monologue is saying how she noticed something, and then we get the end. This is a one-part book. Now, I know. There are going to be some of you that are going to come back at me and say, but Mr. Francie, there is a part two. It's called Mrs. De Winter. I am more than aware that Mrs. De Winter, the book is out there. However, Daphne du Maurier did not write Mrs. De Winter. And also, Mrs. De Winter was written a good 60 years after book one was written. So, Daphne du Maurier never intended for there to be a part two. It was never in the works. There was never a part two that was presented. So again, we have the same frustration that we have with Goosebumps, My Hairiest Adventure, in that it's a sudden ending, and there is nothing else coming. Because the point I'm making about Goosebumps as well as Rebecca is if there was a book two in the series, then what we would get is a cliffhanger ending. And I have no problem with a cliffhanger ending. Yep, I'm all for a cliffhanger. But when there is no part two, you better love act one because there is no act two. <laughs> You're kind of stuck in a situation where it's like, what the heck? How is this an ending to a standalone book? I mean, it's not like we can ask Daphne du Maurier this because, as I said, it was written so long ago. Daphne du Maurier, du Maurier is dearly departed. We can't talk to her anymore unless, as Grandma Yetta likes to say in the nanny, unless we use a Ouija board. But I do wonder what was going on in the head of Daphne du Maurier, or for the sake of my hairiest adventure, R.L. Stein, when they ended these books the way that they did. Now again, I absolutely am going to be the first to say there are readers out there who probably love this, because they can create in their own mind how this book ended. But again, I need to tell you that I am not one of them. I don't want to have to create this in my own mind. I want to know how the author saw this finishing. When you have a standalone book, you kind of need to close off everything in a way that's going to satisfy the average reader. And the best way to satisfy an average reader is if you are going to open up uh, some kind of a topic or a discussion, some kind of plot, whatever the situation may be. If you don't have a close to, as in a closing point, to what you have brought up, 
you're leaving it very much up in the air. And for those who love that type of thing, that's wonderful that they do. It's because the majority of readers don't like this. We find it very frustrating because it's not completed. There is a difference between, if we go back to Rebecca, saying, we rounded the corner and then I saw this, and then ending it, versus having a book where, um, let's just say we have, oh, I'm just plucking an example out of thin air, we have a woman who has had a very tough life, but finally she feels free from all of her burdens, so she stepped out of the door to begin her day. I have no problem ending there because we've resolved what's going on, and all we're showing at the end there is that she's moving on. She's stepping out of the door, and life is about to begin afresh for her. We've concluded what we need to conclude. But with Rebecca, we've opened up a whole new can of worms with what our protagonist has just seen, and we're not dealing with the can of worms we've just opened. But now I want to go back to The One by Kiara Cass, because this is the one situation. <laughs> See what I did there? The one situation where we actually have a book that is the smack bang in the middle of a series. So this is book three. There were two books that came before this one, but most importantly, there are two books that came up after this one. The Air. Now, we finish this one on the cliffhanger because it because this is a book three and there is a book four, I consider the fact that it ended so suddenly to be a cliffhanger. And whatever we left on is going to be addressed in book number two, as in the next book in the series, in this case, book three to book four. But you know what I mean. Am I the only one that thinks this way? Like, you're ending book three, we're going to continue a series with book four, so we're going to pick up where we left off and keep going, right? But apparently Miss Kiera Cass had a completely different idea about how she was going to do things, because where we end off with book three in that room with that thing that I wanted to see play out that was going to happen in book four, Miss Kiera Cass decides to have a time jump between these two books. So all of a sudden we go from our two characters that are in this room that are going to do this thing that I really want to see because I'm so invested in, but you know, nuts to that, we're just going to jump ahead something like 14, 15, 16 years in the future. And there is not even a prologue or a chapter one where it, you know, that picks up from where we left off and then jumps. No, we just jump right away. So the whole thing that I wanted to experience in this book, I didn't even get to see. My point in all of this is that it is incredibly annoying when we open up a new topic, at, when, when readers like myself, we come across a book and we're reading it and we're really invested in it and then right at the end we open up a whole new can of worms, a whole new topic, and then that topic isn't seen through and there is nothing else that is going to uh, to follow up to address that. Even in the case, as I said, of The One, despite the fact that it's book three in a five book series, we time jump with this one. So we don't even address it in this one. And that's something that I found even more frustrating than with, say, Rebecca or My Hairiest Adventure, because I knew they were standalone, so I knew that there was nothing else coming out that I could read into where the story does continue. Again, I'm well aware of the Mrs. De Winter book. It just really frustrates me. More to the point, had I left a with an, a massive cliffhanger in a book, I personally would think it would be disrespectful to my readers to start a book number two or three or whatever the next book is that uh, follows on in the series from the cliffhanger I've just left everyone with, jumping way forward in time and not even addressing this cliffhanger that I left, unless I had a full-on plan. If I had a plan to jump ahead, say, 50 years in the next book, and then by the end of the book, something happens that connects back to what was going on in the book before it, then that's a different story. At least it's still addressed somewhere in the book. But if I don't have that plan, then I want to be picking up right where I left off, because otherwise I feel like I'm cheating my readers, who are literally picking up this next book, because they want to see what is happening next, and not they want to see what is happening 15, 16 years in the future. I mean, is this just the way that I'm thinking? Is this just the way that I'm feeling? You know, do you agree? Do you disagree? Comment below and let me know, because I'm very intrigued to see 
how you guys feel about this, whether from a writer perspective or whether from a reader perspective. But that is where I am going to leave it. Have you read any books recently or any books at all that have come to an abrupt and sudden ending that you wish to discuss with me? Let me know those in the comments below as well. But in the meantime, that is where I am going to leave it, letting you guys go. Peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. Mwah. Thank you so much for watching and happy reading.